Hello, hello guys. Once again, welcome to Seven Share Farm. And as I told you, I am in Uganda, learning from the East Africans, because as I tell you guys, they are so way ahead of us when it comes to livestock farming and integrated farming. Today, I've made my way to Nguru Farms, and I'm here with Mr. Richard. And we're gonna be talking about a topic that most of you have been asking me, and I personally have been wondering about as well, which is, is it good for a farmer to do integrated farming, which is basically mist farming or having different type of farm on their land or in their farm? Or should we specialize in let's say poultry farming or piggery or even goat farming and just be good at it and expand? This is a question if you're a new farmer you're thinking about. This is a question if you're a frustrated farmer because you're getting caught up in obstacles you're also thinking about. And that is what I'm gonna discuss with Mr. Richard today because I have seen his farm, guys, and it's unbelievable. He is killing it, and I wanna share that information with you. So, Mr. Richard, thank you so much for having us. You're most welcome. Um, so, you know, one of the questions that most of us are wondering is integrated farm versus specialized farming. I see you're doing so many here. First of all, what is your choice would if you were to start again would you still start doing different farming or would you have specialized in one i'll still do different mm. mixed farming is good okay. there are so many advantages mm. i think you have seen the pigs you have seen the goats you have seen some cows yeah. you have seen bees mm. uh, there's the chicken bit of it yeah and then the fish yeah then uh, all in all they all add up in market Mm -hmm. and cost of feeds. Mm -hmm. So like the way I've explained earlier on, mm -hmm. when you're doing farming, either doing it as a hobby, you have inherited, yeah. have been pushed to farming, yeah. you're trying to copy what others are doing, mm -hmm. or you are thinking that if I go this way, I'll make money. Mm -hmm. It's true, in farming there's money, and in the same farming you can lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So, when you start something in a farm, Look at what am I wasting and how can I utilize the waste. We mm. started with the piggery. Yeah. Before the piggery you see there is the ducks section. Mm. When you get served food at home, mm. then there is some food that remains. Mm. Where does that food go? Mm. Same case applies to the pigs. Mm. So when you serve them food, some will not eat well, others will leave the food. It is always good practice, sweep everything, then put fresh food. Mm. So this one you have swept, give it to the ducks. Mm. It's not good practice to give it to the chicken. Chicken easily get diseases, yeah. but ducks are more resistant to diseases. Mm. That's why the ducks are there. Mm. Then the issue of feeding again became very expensive because maize prices are always up and down. Yeah. The cost of protein is extremely high. Yeah. You know the issue of soya yeah. and silver fish. Yeah. Here we call it mukene. Yeah. So the challenge is, how do you manage your cost when you have many animals? Mm. Uh, if you translate well, the more, the more animals you have, the more you have to input. Mm. So number one, you have to cut down the cost of protein. So how do you go about it? That's how the BSF for maggots farming mm -hmm. came into place. Okay. So when you start farming, don't start everything at once. Mm -hmm. Let one thing lead you to the other. Okay. So, it's just the basic definition of relation. So, when you see you are wasting food, yeah. bring the ducks, let them eat that, you'll make money. Put ducks and geese, geese are very expensive. Okay. You'll make a fortune. Then after that, you will notice that I'm wasting food and the food is high. Mm. So I need to save the cost. So how do I save the cost? Protein is the most expensive bit of the food composition. So you may Google, you may go online and you learn these things. I'm sure you have also reached here because of the internet. Yeah. So I need to cut the cost. Soya is expensive, silver fish is expensive. What else can I feed? Yeah. Some people feed offers, but when you feed offers to the animals, mm -hmm. one, they get diseases easily because they will inherit diseases from the other ones which are already slaughtered. Yeah. And two, they become like cannibals. They will keep on biting and tearing each other. Yeah. So, when you get the option of the maggots, that's the way to go. Yeah. 
the cost of maggots is actually 10 times or much less than the cost of soya and fish compared. So, so in your case, mm. what you're telling us right now is, you know, you started different farm because you were making use of the waste of food that were going, which could then be food to the next farm that you started. For example, the pig food was going into um, the ducks. And then in order to reduce the cost of food, you started market. Exactly. Yeah. One thing leads to the other. Yeah. So it came a time now, I introduced fish. Mm -hmm. I saw I was next to the swamp. Mm -hmm. I made my ponds. Mm -hmm. For me, I go blindly. Yeah. Number one, I never brought people here to test the, so the, the acidity of the water, the pH. So what I did, I realized that there's natural fish. We call it in cages. Mm -hmm. It looks like tilapia, but it's a fish which doesn't go beyond three or four inches. Okay. But it will eat as much as the normal tilapia will eat. Okay. So when I saw this wild fish are surviving, mm -hmm. I said, let me try because I have the place here. So the moment I introduced the fish, mm -hmm. I started buying food. Then I saw I cannot manage to buy this feed, it's too expensive. The, the pallet food. When you try to Google, they tell you how you feed, the cost of food is extremely high. Yeah. The ratios they want you to feed the fish is also extremely high. Yeah. So uh, I was Googling and I came of a certain farmer in Kenya, whereby he was feeding his fish using the poultry waste. Mm. Then I said, why don't I start the chicken part? I think we have gone through the chicken yeah. structures. So I brought in broilers. Mm -hmm. Then I realized when these birds consume food, they are pouring some down. Yeah. And also the destination, mm -hmm. when they chew, they also defecate very fast. So the food is not fully utilized. Mm -hmm. So I started picking that food, sun drying it yeah. in the sun. Yeah. Then after that, I would add some broken maize and some silver fish mm. I mix. I'm telling you today as we talk, my tilapias can reach two kilos within a year. I also support, uh, when I supply to the market, I also have a lot of wild fish. You have seen the catfish. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the one who introduced, but when they enter the ponds and there's food, they multiply. Yeah. And they live well with the tilapias. Yeah. So, no, the other... The yeah, other but, thing is the market. Yeah. Farming really frustrates because you produce, mm -hmm. for example, when it's raining all over the country, yeah. be sure by the time you're harvesting, everybody will be having the same harvest you have. So the supply will be high, mm. the demand will be low, mm. and nowadays because of the economy, mm. the purchasing power is also equally low. Mm -hmm. So the prices will be very frustrating. So what do you do? You either let the feeds go to waste in your farm or you channel another mechanism of getting more money. Mm. So I have the solutions for whatever you are seeing here in the yeah. farm. And I also have future possible solutions which I, which I know I will get more money. Yeah. When it comes to the fish I've sold in the market for the last three years, yeah. you take there like four, five tons, six tons, but uh, you can't you get almost up to 20 million mm -hmm. but if you introduced a system whereby this fish you are selling directly to the consumer be it in your farm let people come let them eat you can introduce spot fishing where people will come you give them the commercial hook you tell them each fish is 30,000 even in the villages here people have their money but not everybody can go to the lakeside to eat fish yeah. so I mean, a fish is delicacy. Somebody yeah. will say, where can I take my kids on Sunday? Mm -hmm. They'll definitely come to your farm, yeah. have their children study. They'll leave you some money for study. Yeah. They'll come eat. You're making money. You have matoke. Like now on the piggery unit, we have some pork joint in Kampala. Mm -hmm. However local the pork joint is, minimum you can sell it's roughly about 20 kilos a day. You can... Whatever number of pigs you have, you can never satisfy a pork joint. Yeah. The reason is, if you are doing 20 kilos every day, on month, per month you are roughly around 650 kilos minimum. Trust me, it is almost impossible to have those animals coming from your farm to the pork joint. And here is the beauty. 
if somebody from the abattoir or a broker came and bought your pig, one they use estimation, two they will give you nine thousand per kilo if you are smart enough to have a weighing scale. That is carcass weight, not live weight. Yeah. But if you have a pork joint, you can fetch fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand per kilo. So the bananas you saw in the farm, three pieces is one thousand. So you always have some cash to push you forward. So that, that that's great. I mean, because what you're saying is just diversifying your farm to be able to have different source of income. And in that way, if something even one of them is going bad, the other can support each other. That's true. What about long term versus short term? Because other farmers that I know also do integrated farm because they know some of it is going to take them a while to get money. Others, it can, they can get quick money from it, like three months, you know. Others, it's going to take six, one year, and so on. What is, what is your opinion on that? That is the traditional way we used to believe things mm -hmm. happen. Mm -hmm. But over the last three years, when COVID came in, mm -hmm. things have totally changed. Yeah. When we were in lockdown, mm -hmm. it is only we people who have some trucks who would manage to move. Mm -hmm. And it's only farmers who enjoyed their freedom. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, true. So that one changed so many things at yeah. ago. Anyone who was working in an office, either the salary came in, as a half, you now have kids back at home. Yeah, the expense at home is higher. Even higher. You are not working, and for us businessmen, we actually ate our capital mm -hmm. because you are at home. You are not working. People have to eat. So there are things we started from COVID and which we are still learning. Number one, we need to diversify. Yeah. At least people who are doing different things would still get something to still get some revenue trickling in. No, that, that's very interesting. And I don't want this video to go on and on, even though I know I would love to talk to you and there's so much knowledge that you can share with us. Guys, you've heard the man diversify your farm, you know, think about things that can support you when one is down. With the current economy that we are living in in Africa, nothing is for sure, guys. So go out there and live your dreams because together, we want to make farming in Africa more recreative and more profitable. Thank you guys so much and thank you Mr. Richard for talking to us. And we will see you again with another episode very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>